Hi, folks. Welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Uh, welcome to a, another, uh, well, the second one, uh, second episode, I guess we shall say, uh, of traditional life in a traditional family and how to become uh, a traditional biblical family. Now, I do not, by any means, profess to be an expert on this, although it is something that I have studied uh, much of my adult life and continue to study and continue and strive uh, to embody that uh, in my personal life and in my family of being a, a, as, as much as possible um, traditional, uh, biblical, um, and, and representing what um, I believe, in my opinion, God has laid forth and laid out for us in the Bible of how we should run our homes and raise our children and and how a uh, marriage should function and all that and so uh, I've decided as I'm able to to produce a video uh, on this subject because I do believe it has something to do with everything that's going on and uh, preparedness because if we are not uh, raising up our our children and running our homes in a biblical traditional way um, it's all going to get it's all going to get destroyed. Um, the the world, the left, um, the, the wickedness in this world is doing its darndest to destroy traditional and biblical family values out of this world. And if you want your children to not grow up thinking they're one of five million different genders um, and that it's okay to view disgusting uh, provocatively dressed men dressed as women dancing or to do it themselves then maybe you should raise a family uh, based on traditional biblical values now um, today I want to talk a little bit about manliness and raising children specifically boys uh, to be men last week I talked about patriarchy biblical patriarchy and um, as this goes on, I'll have my wife on and we'll talk about marriage and we'll talk about womanhood and raising daughters and, and all kinds of things. We haven't got it all worked out yet. These are just ideas in our heads. So bear with me. A lot of this, I'm just kind of, you know, that sounds like a good idea. I'm going to get on there and talk about it. That's pretty much how it is. There is a war on manliness there's a war on boys there's a war on boys and manliness um, we are taught and when i say we i mean the world i mean the americans we're trying they're trying to teach us especially our children that uh, manliness is toxic that it's bad it's bad to be a man it's bad to act like a man and it's been so long i think since there's been a, a decent representation of manliness that even the people that are standing up amongst the crowd and saying, oh, look at me, I'm a man, I'm, this is manliness. In my opinion, and I don't say this from a con conceited way, I say this because it's based on what the Bible describes uh, and our, our forefathers and traditions and, and, and men that went before us, that a lot of what is the representation of manliness today is really a very false image. Of manliness um, you know the the Andrew Tates and others of his ilk that get out there and try to um, you know beat their chests that you should be like me you should be wealthy like me you should have all the women that I do you should be good-looking like me strong like me and treat people like I do because that's manliness uh. you and I know that that's not true I have no idea what just fell off the shelf. But you and I know that that's not true. You and I know that that is not a representation of manliness. Um, it's unfortunate, though, that there's not a lot. In fact, um, a lot of the, the representation out there that does purport to show somewhat proper manliness or, you know, what I would think is correct... Um, ends up not being based on on the Bible. And if we do not base what we're doing on strong bi biblical truths, then it's built and it's a house built upon sand. It's simply that. 
And so that's one thing that we must do is, is to, to, to build our character and our homes and our children upon a solid rock, and that is the Word of God. Um, we should want, men, we should want to be manly. It's easy not being manly. I see men of this world that are effeminate, and I think they probably have a pretty easy life. And I think the the temptation there is very great for some, you know, to not have to get your hands dirty or break sweat too often or do anything that's too hard and just enjoy lavish comforts um, and and explore and and expose your your emotions to the world. I could see where that's tempting. I could see where that is a, an easier life. But we were not created. Men, we were not created for an easy life. In fact, God himself said that we will work by the sweat of our brow. We were not created to have an easy life. We were created to be protectors and providers. Uh, we were uh, created to stand in the gap and to defend our homes and our families and our communities. We were created to be the ones that, without question, we would sacrifice ourselves for our loved ones. That's what we were created to do. We were crea created to be bold, to be as bold as a lion and stand up against evil and against wrongdoing and stand up for the weak. We're commanded in the Bible to take care of widows and orphans and, and to you know take care of the weak among the, the community. That's what men are created to do. We are created to be leaders. No, not leaders that we, you know, brag about how much we have and, 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 and leaders that, um, you know, control every aspect of the, you know, people that are weaker or that we have, you know, leadership over. That's not leadership. Leadership isn't being a boss and telling everyone how they should live their lives. Being a leader is living the life that everyone should live and showing them by example. Um, that's what real leadership is. And as man, men, um, we have, as a community, as, as, a, as, as people, as men in this country, in this Western society, over the last several decades have given up on that. Once, there were real men all over. In fact, it was the common norm to see manly men. And in fact, it was, it was extremely shameful for a man to not be manly. Um, and today it's just the opposite. It's, it's almost shameful or frowned upon for a man to be manly. Uh, it's, it's actually praised and, and glorified for men to be feminine, uh, for them to be weak, uh, for them to be hyper-emotional. Um, we as men, we have to stand up against this, and we have to push back. And it's going to be hurtful, and it's going to cost us, and we're going to have nasty things said to us. But that's part of being a man. I mean, that's just how it is. That's what being a man is. And then we have to teach this to our children, and very specifically our boys, because it doesn't do us any good to learn how to be a manly man if we're not passing that on to our children and especially our sons. We need to build up a next generation of manly men.